Okay guys, hope you're doing all good. I have a little battle for you today, and I'm going to be in charge of the Lizardmen, led by a big old fat boy Slan here, up against R. Rex and his Tomb Kings, who's brought a very interesting build, so I'm quite excited to show you this, guys. So, as you can see, both armies have ignored 90% of the battlefield here, and have both deployed up on top of the high ground. Now, we've gone for a very heavy Saurus build here, as you can see. So, on the left flank, we do have some Saurus Spears, all the way chevroned up to triple gold. This catches a lot of people off guard who don't realise, try charging in troops, and these guys can actually tear up and do a decent amount of damage, especially against cav troops. Now, for the front line, we have just Saurus Warriors of Shields all the way out into the sunset there, all the way up into the edge of this forest. Speaking of which, we have tuners of horned ones hiding in the forest as well. And I just love these cav. They're quite pricey, but they do a ton of damage. They do surprisingly well against large as well, mainly just because they're armor piercing, even though they don't specifically have anti-large themselves. And they're quite tough. You know, they do have 100 armor, decent amount of HP, cause fear. Overall, very cool, thematic looking units. Now, leading our forces today, we do have the fat boy himself. The Slam Mage Priest, very love crafting up on his little floating seat here. And he's the Slam Mage Priest of Light today, which is the one I've been using for the majority. I do need to try out the other one, so let me know, guys, uh, you know, what other Slams you'd like to see. But he himself has got Banishment, Shield of the Old Ones, all basically all his decent buffs. And for spells, he has Brianna's Time Warp. He has another Banishment, and net and Files Protection. So overall, Brennan's Time Warp, super useful in this matchup. You either drop it on your Horned Ones, and allow them to absolutely munch for a specific target, or you drop it on top of the Saurus Warriors, turn them into absolute lawnmowers against, you know, Light Tomb King's infantry. Saurus do tend to fare pretty well against them. In the back, we have the Legion of Shakwa, regiment around Saurus Warriors. These guys have a great ability called the Shield of Shakwa, which gives a 44% missile resistance to nearby troops when activated. They come up against Tomb Kings, who bring those you know, horrible, you shop to great bows and all the skeleton archers. They're pretty useful. And finally for our army, we do also have the Umbral Tide, the regiment-renowned Salamander hunting pack. I love these guys in most matchups. The fact they have Stalk, so they're invisible, really allows you to get close to the enemy. They're fairly quick, especially if they're perfect vigor. And again, they do that anti-large damage, and flaming attacks tend to do good against undead factions. So let's look at my opponent's build. He's gone for a super interesting build here. I was very shocked when I saw it. So in the back, he does have two units of carry, and they're these undead little birdies. They're going to be flapping around, being a, basically a pain in the butt, is their main idea, and also chasing off units. The main meat of his army is just kind of in single entities in these really high elite units. So over on the right-hand flank, he does have the regiment-renowned Sphinx up here, the big old Necro Sphinx. Super powerful unit. I see this all the time on ladder. Causes terror, anti-large armor piercing, very good duelist overall, and super good at taking down you know, big dinosaurs and so forth. So he's going to be a bit of a menace here. He does have two units of my most hated foes to face, the Shopti Great Bows. One standard unit. And one of them is the Chosen of the Gods Regiment Renowns. So these guys do a ton of damage from long range. Super good against elite troops. Super good against those big dinos. Luckily, I've also gone mainly Saurus. But if they start picking on the Slan, I could be in real trouble. In the back, he also has Regiment Around Skeleton Archers. The Blessed Legion of Fact. I have no idea how to pronounce that. I'm horrible with pronunciations. As you probably know if you are a subscriber to the channel. But these guys in the back, I haven't actually faced them before. So what do they have that is different? Um, I mean, they cause fear. Oh, armor sundering. Okay, these guys have armor sundering. That's actually going to be very good in this matchup. And for his lord, he has gone for the high queen herself. On top of a sneaky snake here, which is just a very cool man. Imagine that slivering towards you. is very terrifying. So she's a duelist, has poison attacks. So a bit of a terror. And over on the left here, we do have a little bit of a cav utingent. Or detingent, sorry. We have Necropolis Knights with Halberds. Anti-large, they're going to be great. They'd be pretty decent up against the Horned Ones as well, actually. Although they're going to get bogged down by Saurus Warriors. And two Tomb Princes here. Who, Tomb Princes, for those who don't know, are anti-large. Very decent melee combatants. Think the Noble from High Elves. Or, you know, a Captain or a Fane of that type of unit. Melee experts, anti-large, armor-piercing. The lot. Very good unit over on. Do they, in fact, did I spy Guardian there? They give off Guardian. I'm assuming they give Guardian to each other as well. So that is very good role in the pair there. So let's get this underway. A couple of early shots coming in on the Umbral Tide here. And it looks like the Saurus Warriors are getting picked on a little bit as well by these Shopty foes. They do have that 44% missile resistance down. 
So as we push up on the right hand side, I do realize that the Sphinx is slightly nice, a little bit too far out from his army. Now I understand my opponent, what he's mainly going to be trying to do is moving up, you know, his Tomb Princes, the horses and whatnot, to keep my army distracted and blobbed up while he does all this range firepower. However, this is just too tempting of a target. So I do go charge him with both units of one supported by two storms. I drop down the net so there's no way this guy can you know, use his mass to push through and escape. And then I drop down a time warp plus shield of the old one. So I'm now getting 22% damage resistance, 24 speed, which isn't too useful here, but also 26 melee attack. And we are tearing through this big target here. Yes, he's going to be doing damage back to one unit of horned ones, but nowhere near enough for the amount of value we're getting here, tearing him apart. So Karen do swoop down, trying to shake down the Umbral Tide. Who are doing some nice damage onto the Chosen. You can see a couple of Kobe's going in there, shooting them in the back. And the rest of the Saurans have pushed forward, trying to get into that back line, but my opponent has pushed forward to these Knights and the Tomb Princes. And they're going to be doing a decent amount of damage here. We are trying to move over our Saurus of Spears to get on top of these Knights. So let's see how the big boy is doing. So even the fat Slan is getting in on the action there with the time warp on him. We have this guy completely surrounded. He's done about two thirds of damage to one uniform one. But for his value, that was a great little capture. And down he goes. And we should be able to push through these trees and get into that back line, which is exactly where we want to be. So Legion of Shackwood just finished off those carrying there, protecting the Umbral Tide. We are going to start laying in some shots into these Tomb Princes. The Knights here do start to retreat. It looks like we do put a blood statue of Spite down on them, doing a little bit of damage and making them a bit slower, as they did not want to fight this sword. So we're now going to take this opportunity to try and push into this back line and get on top of these archer units. Now the Prince have gone really deep here, trying to get on top of the Tide, trying to shut them down, knowing how much of a threat they can be. We are going to completely surround them with Saurus, including the Legion of Shackle, and hopefully, if I remember, to pull these Umbral Tide back here, we'll be able to start firing in as well. The rest of the Saurus are trying to push forward. Horn ones unfortunately have been broken off by these knights, but in the turn, the Saurus Spears has been a huge amount of damage, and we do get another net down. The net plagues have been very key this battle, and these stores triple chevron up should be absolutely tails by the part whilst soaking up a lot of this firepower. So in the back it looks like we do get a unit of horn ones on top of the regular shop to great bows here. They'd probably lose this fight just due to how you know beaten up they are, but they're getting a nice bit of damage in and at least they're stopping them from shooting. We are unfortunately able to sacrifice a unit of Saurus here just to tie up the high queen there while we deal with these tomb princes. So I am blobbing up much like my opponent wants, however we managed to distract his back line with just basic Saurus here, you know, these triple chevron ones here, and also just some you know, tattered units of horned ones. So overall the ammo is not being you know, too devastating at the moment. But we are managing to pick off these Tomb Princes here, with a couple of these flaming Kobe's coming in from the Umbral Tide. We do drop a shield down just to try and protect ourselves from a bit of friendly fire here, and also drop down a Time Warp, and you know, just trying to really finish off these Tomb Princes as quick as possible. Maybe not necessary, maybe in a bit better to save the Winds of Magic, but I hadn't used too much up. So overall, I think it's probably good in my favour there, just to wipe those two guys off, as now there is nothing to protect in this back line, apart from the Queen herself, and a very beaten up unit of Knights. So our forward, you know, Vanguard units there, which pushed forward, have been beaten back. The Soros are retreating, and it looks like the very elite unit of Soros are running for the hills. But my opponent's going to be forced to give up the chase on them, come back to deal with this main blob, and they're probably going to rally and then come back and be a pain in the butt. So we do have some horned ones up here, just five minutes. They're going to be charging back up the hill. Just look at how badass these guys are. Dinosaurs riding super gangster raptors here with their little golden grills on their face. And they're going to be charged up into the back line here, hopping on top of these shops and trying to shut them down. Looks like we do finish off some carrion, and this is massive Saurus, the hordes are approaching. They're charging in. It looks like we're getting some decent shots of the Umbral Tide down on the High Queen herself, which would be pretty good for us. It's Lan staying fairly safe and just hanging out on the right hand side. So blobbing up our troops like this is a little bit dangerous because they're going to get great value of their shooting. However, it does allow us to pop down the Shield of Shack and get that big missile resistance on all our units here, which is super valuable. We drop a banishment down. I believe that is the free banishment, not the one that actually costs Queen of Magic. Unfortunately, it does actually go in the wrong direction, but you know, a little bit of damage forces them forward. These cold ones on the side, with cold blooded drops them to increase their leadership, have held up these shops with great bows for a considerable amount of time, which is very good. And again, that constant overwatch coming from the Umbral Tide as the Legion of Swords trying to hold the line. However, we are getting a lot of breaks here. There's a lot of terror routes as well. I believe the High Queen does her service towards terror. 
and Dr. Shield, but it's a little bit too late. All our units are starting to run, and all of a sudden, even though the power balance is massively in our favour, all these units rounding the edge of the board is very close here, so it's a little bit dangerous. However, they are being forced to run past the might of Sun, who is shaming them all as they run, so hopefully they should rally at the sight of their glorious Toad Overlord. And in the back, it looks like we do have that super elite unit. It's really been an MVP to be honest, holding the line and being a general pain. Going to be running in the back on top of the Chosen God. We should be able to take those guys down. Umbral Tide between that constant fire. Looks like going to help finish off Cycling herself here. We saw us do surround her and slowly drag her down off her mighty snake mount. And looks like, looks like she goes, and with that, her army does crumble. It's a very interesting game, very strange game, a super fun to play. So a nice Peric victory. Let's go to the insats. So yes, a Peric victory. So well played to our Rex there. I'm actually loving the build. Super strange build, but I'm liking the fact that, you know, it's just these speed bumps he sends at you. He sends the big Sphinx, sends the um, Tomb Princes, and the little Knights, just to hold you up while the range do a lot of damage. And as you can see, 79, 50, and 44 kills. They did do a lot of damage, however, I luckily I managed to catch up the Sphinx very early on. And my build was kind of suited for dealing with Shopti. I hate you, Shopti, with all my soul and heart. I mean, I use them when I am Tomb Kings. I don't blame people for using them. They're such a good unit. They're such a pain to deal with, especially if you are Lizardmen, who are, of course, my favourite faction, the one I use the most. But going very wide against the Tomb Kings tends to work quite well. With these two very elite spear units, you can tend to poke down those big constructs, especially with the Umbral Tide and a couple of units of these horned ones. So overall, I've been really enjoying this build, and I've gone back to using the Slan, which I was using. I used um, Crocgarth for quite a while in the last couple of builds. Before I'd mix up, go back to Slan. Very fun game overall. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do consider leaving a like and subscribe, and it really helps out the channel. And if you want to support a little bit more, I do also have a Patreon just down in the description below. So I apologise for technical difficulties I had earlier on my YouTube channel. Uh, my last upload, it uploaded and there was no sound for some reason, which happens every now and again super rarely. It's very frustrating, but that has been re-recorded and re-uploaded. So this was just to make up for that. I thought I'd drop two videos in one day and expect a video hopefully coming out tomorrow. So peace, peace, guys. Stay awesome. See you soon.